Hey, Discern listeners, 90 Day Fiance, let's watch. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. As I always say, everything that I create on the internet, since it's a psychology podcast, might have triggering material, so watch with care. Let's watch. <laughs> Some makeup, something, you know. It's exciting. I am fiercely loyal. I pride myself for that. And this tattoo I have on my arm, it's the fedora and the glove from when he did Billie Jean. And then I call him my Mikey. So it's my Mikey and my handwriting. And then just the music clef with the heart. All right. So we're learning that she is a super fan of Michael Jackson. And she has a tattoo. You yeah, know, nothing abnormal about that. We can get into the allegations about his behavior. But... Um, you know, okay, she, she's a super fan of Michael. Does that play into, we know that she uh, is dating Usman, so is that part of what the appeal is about Usman? Is that he is a performer? I don't know, let's find out. He's 25 years old, and he is amazing. He is my biggest accomplishment, and is the best thing that came out of my marriage to my ex-husband. After 20 years with Jamal's father, I found out he was cheating. I don't even know which one to pick from because there were so many. All right, so we're learning about Kim's life. She was married for 20 years. According to her, she, he cheated a lot. And she also has a son with him, 25. She seems to have a pretty good relationship with him. We're also learning that Kim takes care of her mother, who has rheumatoid arthritis and um, needs help around the house. We're also learning she has a couple cats which is always delightful to see. So, okay, cheating. That's going to, you know, that's going to hurt. And so let's see if that affected her in terms of her relationship with Usman, you know, the schemas that that can create, meaning you can't trust other people, you're worthless. Let's see what happens. Having been so loyal to somebody that didn't reciprocate that to me was a very hurtful thing. And it's pretty much been years of nonstop bad luck ever since. But my love life is actually making me pretty happy right now. Okay, she says that since the divorce, I think is what she's referring to, it's been nonstop bad luck. I wonder what that means. Does that mean in love? Does that mean just in life? Maybe we'll find out. I think Usman is very, very talented. Would I put him in the same category as Michael Jackson? Mm, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Yeah, I'll say that song's pretty good. <laughs> if I was at a restaurant that played that kind of music and I heard that, I wouldn't be annoyed. <laughs> I'm pretty picky about my music, and some restaurants just play the worst music. I don't want to alienate anyone with, like, different genres that I don't like. But, but yeah, if I heard that song, I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, that's a nice melody. You're a slash rapper guy because I am so, like, normal. And also, he's 32 years old. That's a pretty big age gap right there. I may act like I'm 12 on the inside, but my body is 50, honey. Like, can I keep up with him? Milk does a body good, but only for so long. <laughs> so I don't know if Usman has some kind of different microphone, but I remember talking about this in, in was it, on uh, Bears All. I don't even know if I've posted that episode, but I don't know if you saw the microphone. It's t it's in the wrong direction. It's supposed to be this way. <laughs> I don't know why that bothers me. I'm sure he knows how to use microphones. Uh, he's the performer, but there's something about when, when people don't have the microphone pointing in the right way, it always just irks me. Kimberly hasn't been too successful in her relationships with the man. One reason I think is because she tries so hard to be like the perfect woman. She wants to be everything a man needs, but I want her to be herself when she goes over there and stay the, true to herself. All right, that's interesting. We're learning from Kim's mom that, uh, according to her, her uh, observing Kim that she will, ch you know, change who she is to fit what she believes is what someone else needs Kim to be instead of staying true to herself. That's interesting. It's interesting observation. So. Sometimes that's from a place of codependency where you'll chameleon. Sometimes it's a place of desperation out of preoccupied attachment. Sometimes it's a result of dependent personality. Sometimes it's a result of not knowing who you are and just absorbing other people's personalities because you don't really, you don't really know who you are and what you want. She 
doesn't seem like that to me. So I would assume that it would be some kind of preoccupied attachment need to be like, look, I cannot lose this person. I will do anything to retain uh, this love relationship, including uh, not being assertive, essentially, and just put me you know, stuffing my feelings. I'll, I'll do whatever it takes to make sure that this relationship works. Um, it kind of sound given what we know about her, it seems like that might be, but I don't know. Let's let's watch. You want a truth? He is so much younger than her, and she's been hurt a lot. She puts her feelings out there on the line, and they haven't always been reciprocated. So, what if they get over there and there's no chemistry? It's gonna kill her. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in-person chemistry is something you cannot predict. And it's been, if any of you have ever on online dated, you understand that, that you have tons of chemistry on texting, you, you see the picture and it just seems like, oh, butterflies, I'm, it's great. And then you meet, there's like nothing, <laughs> just like no flame, no spark, nothing. You're like, oh, wow, I guess that was that. So absolutely, but we'll find out. It's gonna kill her. I've heard that so many times, like, his age is such a big thing. It's, it's, if, I believe, like, love is love, and love, you can't yeah. help who you love, and there, you shouldn't feel bad about who you love. Yeah, completely agree. This whole age that, you know, the, I, don't show, I don't know if I show this clip, but the mom said, you're old enough to be his mother. So what? <laughs> like, this whole idea of, like, you're old enough to be his mother, but you're not his mother. <laughs> who cares? He's in his 30s. You know, uh, do we believe that this is incest or exploitation or no, it's just a it's just an age difference. It's fine. And the fact that, she, you know, Kim is just like, yeah, everyone's focusing on the age difference. If anything, you should be focusing on the cultural difference, which is real. He is Nigerian. She is American. They are vastly different cultures. The adjustment that each person is going to have to make, particularly if they live in this, wherever they decide to live, is tremendous. The age difference is nothing. Kenny and Armando, I think their age difference is larger than this, and everyone understands that Kenny and Armando are possibly the best relationship that's ever existed in reality TV, and they have a massive age difference. But no one focuses on that because they're healthy. So let's get rid of the age difference thing. <laughs> Knock it off. Like, I know everybody's concerned and everybody loves me and, and that's all wonderful, but I wish people would just, like, get it. You know what I mean? Like... I get it. This is my life, you I know? I know it is, honey. I know it is. At 50, you know, this is my, fi this is my final chance. I mean, when's, when is it my turn? Okay, I get that. But if I were there, I'd be, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm 51. I just turned 51. Honey, you got a lot of years left. You can do anything. Uh... This isn't the end of the road. This isn't your final chance. Do not think. Now, women can sometimes feel this. Heterosexual women can sometimes feel this way because when you go online dating, you start, or you just start dating, you start realizing that past a certain age, you become like really not sought after. You know, it, it, statistics show because these online date dating forums you know like plenty of fish and these other places they'll they'll publish their data um you know they'll aggregate everything they won't out anyone but they find i can't remember the stats but it was something like you know men in their 50s on average ref, refuse to even allow women in their 50s to you know be filtered through to their possible dates so men in their 50 like the average man in their 50s is like Oh, the oldest woman I'm going to date is like 42 or something. Like, not even like 50. It's like, you know, they're looking for women in their 20s and 30s, men in their 50s. And, uh, you know, I could go on and on about that and about misogyny and sexism. But what I'll say is that we, as a society, uh, I don't know if around the world, but in Western society, we, uh, like, there's a great online skit done by Tina Fey and... Uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus and oh, what's her name? I can't remember her name. Anyway, it's a, it's a few of them, and they're talking about how they're too old, and and they're welcoming a new, uh, a younger old person into their group, and they're just like, yeah, get ready. Like you, the only roles you're ever gonna get is like, like a S Spider Man's mom or something. <laughs> 
uh, I'm not telling this joke very well or this scenario very well, but point is, is that as a society, you know, past a certain age as a woman, you're just like ignored. It's like, you, you don't matter. You're not a sexual object. You're disgusting. You, your voice doesn't matter. You're just, you're, you know, you're an old lady and who cares about you? And so, you know, there's some oppression there. But if I were there with her, I, I would say, no, 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 this is not your last chance. And, you know, hopefully, th you know, the other thing she's expressing is, I feel I, she's not saying this directly, but I think what she's saying is, I'm really excited about me and Usman. And I feel like no one is excited with me. And that hurts my feelings. And I'm, I'm getting tired of constantly having to justify everything to everyone. And, and I get that, you know, she's excited and she wants other people to be excited with her. And why would everyone just rain on her parade? Um, so there's that. But I would also say to her, look, who knows if things will work with Usman? In fact, on average, if I was to put money down, I, I would say it's not going to work. Not because there's something wrong with you or him, but you you barely know each other. <laughs> and you're going to, uh, they're going to Tanzania because he's shooting a video there. So you're going to Tanzania, you're going to meet him in person, and, you know, we'll see what happens. I hope things work out, but I'm not, I'm not holding my breath for this to work. But if it doesn't work, this is not your last shot. <laughs> there are plenty of fish in the sea. Maybe it's harder to date in your 50s as a woman, but you know, it, it's not impossible. People meet pe people all the time. I, I've had clients who were in their 50s and 60s heterosexual women, and you know, it was a bumpy ride going on online dates, but you know, they eventually get there. So uh, I would tell her no, because if she believes that this is her last chance, then it really forces her into a situation where she can't be flexible around. You know, she can't say like, one, uh, I should pull out of this relationship, it's not working. Or two, if Usman pre presents any kind of evidence that it's not gonna work, it's gonna devastate her and cause her to have uh, an overreaction. I don't know though, but let's watch. Just, you know, like, ah, you know, do you trust him? I do. I have to trust this journey and I have to yes. see it through. And you can always come home early if it don't work I out. Know. <laughs> the other thing that uh, I, I've just, I haven't commented on is, I didn't know that Usman and Lisa got divorced. So that's interesting. How come we haven't heard any of that story, <laughs> right? Have we heard any of that story? Because last we heard, uh, Usman and Lisa, well, I guess during the Bears all that, well, I don't know. Anyway, at the last time I remember hearing data around that was at the tell-all. And remember, Lisa was in the States and Usman was still in Nigeria, or, yeah, Nigeria. And he was talking about potentially marrying other women, and they seemed kind of tight-lipped about it. And I, I remember thinking, like, so what's happening here? Because Lisa normally would have been really jealous and upset that he was even talking about dating and marrying other women. So, you know, I wonder how how Lisa's doing. I, I'm I, I'll tell you, I'm not I'm not surprised. I don't think anyone's surprised that they didn't work out because they had a lot of conflict, and Lisa seemed you know, fairly preoccupied in her, uh, seemed, I can't know, but her solution was to control and to scream. And, a, you know, she was like a version of Angela. I think Lisa might have been coming from a different place or maybe the same place. Anyway, so it's, it's just notable that things didn't work out. And notable that Usman is looking to another American woman when I'm guessing there are people in his community that would be up to date him, and so why wouldn't he do that instead? So, but I don't know, maybe maybe it'll work out between the two. You know, Kim seems like a nice enough person. All that. Um, isn't that gonna be an issue then? Um, I can't have them, so just say we got married, just say. I would allow him to marry a second wife and have kids. Interesting, so I mean, it's a decision that everyone can make, but I think this is promising and that she is accepting the religion and the culture that he comes from. Is it his culture or religion? I don't know, both. That he might want to not only marry her, but others. If he wants to have kids, he's going to have to marry someone else. And, and she's like, look, you know, if he wants to marry someone else. And now, is she truly okay with that? Or is she just trying to convince herself of that? You know, who knows? But um, okay, so Lisa was not up for that, right? And you could argue that Usman didn't prepare her for that, but I'm guessing that Kim 
has watched the previous season of 90 Day Fiance, or at least knows the the storyline, and is just like, well, okay, um, if I'm going to make this work, then this is the this is something I'm going to have to accept. And we haven't seen that from a lot of people on the show of just like really wrestling with the reality of the person and their culture that they're coming from and uh, saying, if this is going to work, I'm going to have to adjust. Now, it's also possible that she's polyamorously oriented and truly doesn't care about uh, other involvements of her partners. But anyway, let's watch. I don't want any more kids. Does Usman want kids? Absolutely. If Usman has multiple wives, I feel like that it's okay because I love him. It's his culture and I respect his culture and his religion so much. I wow, we have not heard something like this before. <laughs> it sounds like she's just saying, look, I, I, I respect his culture, his religion. I respect where he's from and I, I'm going to let him be who he is. And wow, I mean, we have not heard that from someone before. So, you know, I, I don't know if it's exactly a good thing or not i will have to see how it plays out but on the surface that's tremendous at the very least it's realistic own relationship and you, you would have your now own until you're actually in it but i guess i wouldn't know until i'm in it you know i really can't like i mean we've we've discussed it and when i actually told him this he was like wow you're amazing and he was like because i'm i am you're letting him yeah, have two women have but i'm but why has it always got to be so defensive though like can you guys be Excuse happy me? for me that's yeah, more of that. Uh, she's like, how come I'm always... And I, I feel like more people in Kim's position on the various iterations of 90 Day Fiance should say this. I mean, at least that's how I would be. I'd just be like, how come every time I talk about this, it's all about the age difference? And the, like, can't you just be supportive? I don't understand. Like, do you think I'm an idiot? Like, just can't you just have some joy with me? I, I, how come you have to nitpick every tiny little thing? Now... Some might say, well, we're not really nitpicking. We're, we're just like surprised that you would be okay with him having multiple other wives that he would have to spend time with and that he would have sex with and he would be in love with and raise children with. And is that really? Are you really okay with that? Because if you are, then okay. But are you sure? You know, so on some level, I think that is a very good question to ask. But on the other hand, it's I just don't understand these friends. You know, if I had a friend like this, I'd be like, oh, great for you. And then I might go, well, I just want to throw something out there. Like, Hiromi was kind of like that with Ellie in the beginning. Hiromi eventually became very much against Victor, right? But in the beginning, Hiromi was just like, look, I love you. I'm supportive of you. But, you know, I have some worries. But if, if this is what you want to do, I'm on your side. And I feel like everything's so defensive and I have to be so defensive. And this is like my thing. And I'm going and I want to feel good about it i need to walk away for a minute yeah i, I totally get that it's it, it at every turn everyone is just like and what we see on the show a lot of times are the kims of the world on the show will be like trying to uh is it well it'll be okay you know they're they're always trying to accommodate other people's concerns when like I said, if if I were in Kim's shoes, this is what I'd do. I'd just be like, oh, this really hurts. Like, I understand. Uh, I get it. But can't you all just, you know, like, support me? Can't you all just see, like, how much I care? And I, I don't know if I've shown these clips, but uh, Kim has said that, look, she's in love. She has She has legit feelings for him and his smile. And you know, it's interesting to think about because when we saw Lisa – and Usman, Usman in the beginning, you know, he, 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 well, what, what do we say? That it seemed like Usman legit was open to a relationship with Lisa and legit was trying to give it a, you know, trying to make it work. So I, I think that it's quite possible that Kim and Usman could work out. Uh, yeah, there are other couples where I'd be like, uh, are we sure that that's really going to happen? So it's possible that Kim is good at detecting like a legit, genuine affection from someone else, Usman. And she knows that and feels it and has evaluated and contemplated and thought about it. And then to get this constant criticism and skepticism from everyone could you know, really be bothersome. What the f I understand, hey. like, 
Here. Here. This has just been a lot. I know. <gasps> I know. No, this is a lot. I'm sorry. Yeah, and good on these two for you know reaching out. I, I hear you. I'm with you. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a compassionate, appropriate move. Good. This has been a lot, you know? I don't know if I'm comfortable with any of this, you know? I really don't know. And I'm scared. Hell yes, I'm scared to death. Okay, that's interesting. So I think what's happening here is that she is ambivalent, and she's fighting internally. That on one hand, and there's been a lot of discussion around this, she needs this to work because she believes this is her last chance. She believes that... Uh, she's never going to have another chance at love. She's trying to make up for things that have happened in the past. And so she needs this to work. And we've seen other people in this state. A lot of people on the show are in that state of just like, I've dated people in my home country and I've had in their mind continual failures. And this is my last ditch effort of just, well, maybe if I go to Nigeria, I'll find someone, maybe that'll work. I don't know. I'm just throwing darts at the wall at this point, hoping I'll hit the bullseye. So on one hand, they're just like, this has to work. And if it doesn't work, I'm a failure. I'm going to be lo alone forever. And I, I'm worthless and no one will ever love me. And, you know, I think we've all been there before. But on the other hand, they think, well, there's a lot of evidence that this is not going to work. How, how do I know? I've never even seen this person in, you know, in person before. And, um, you know, th there's all these things to be skeptical of. And so there's, there's a battle inside. But the desperation of this needs to work will, will eclipse any kind of skepticism or restraint and be like, no, 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 this has to work. It has to work. It has to work. This must work. Everything's fine. Everything's going to be fine. Everything. And then you just convince yourself. You sort of gaslight yourself, if you will, Con convince yourself, brainwash yourself. And then when someone comes along and represents that skeptical voice that you're having inside of you, you, you get, you, you've already, you, you have this ongoing battle with yourself already, and, and you haven't really reconciled with that skeptical voice inside of you. And so you react against it and it, and it hurts. You're just like, you're, but you're tearing down the last hope that I have. You know, this is the last hope. If this doesn't work, then I don't know if I can go on living. I don't know if that's good. But something along those lines. So uh, being aware of that with people is important and not, um, you know, stomping all into that sort of fight. If you, what am I saying? Um, but good for her that she's able to slow down and say like, okay, what's happening for me, it's been really hard, you know, because I what you're saying I kind of agree with and I don't know what to do about it. So what I would hope she could resolve to is I hope this works out. It might not work out. And if it doesn't work out, then, you know, there are other fish in the sea and I'm still a good person. But I don't know if she believes that. We asked us out of concern. Like, and we wanted not, to work for doesn't you. mean that we're not on your team, though. It hurt to hear, like, what, how they feel about this whole thing. But I do understand how my friends are, you know, telling me to be guarded and why they're so protective of me and my heart. They've seen me go through certain situations that are just not good situations. Okay, good. So Kim's able to say, oh, you know, I, I get it. It's coming. They're protective of me, and that's nice. So good that she can see that. And they're as worried as I am that I'm going to get hurt again. But I'm going to meet him, and we're going to see what happens. That's how I feel. Okay, good. She is like, I'm going to meet him. And we'll see what happens. That's great. I think that's the best attitude. It's realistic. All right. Well, that is it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.